So I've been reading up on EOS. What do you think about EOS? Because I have lots of opinions, but I'm more interested in yours because you're newer to it than me. There is an environment you have to install um, at the developer's end. It's called the EOS Studio. And that's specifically for you to write um, contracts and tokens and the blockchain bit. My proportional use of time is that I went to, we want to get back to the front end part and, you know, the, the whole blockchain thing should just be at least a third of the development time or less. The syntax is C++, which everyone kind of, kind of knows, you know, that's like the, that's the mother tongue of all programming languages, but it doesn't look like there's anything that would be annoying to me. What, what I still find is annoying though, is what we said last time is people are confusing activity with action. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what, what I might've said, but, but yes, they're uh, regarding blockchain. It's, it's all speculative and not productive is, is my kind of disagreement with it, right? It's everybody's just going, oh, the, the you know, shitcoin will go up by 12%. So I'm going to buy some shitcoin and I'm going to make 12% on my money. And, and that's what I was, like, cool, I'm doing blockchain. Like, no, you're just gambling. Yeah, that that is not meeting. Go to Vegas, but oh. don't sit there and think you're changing the world because you bought your shitcoin and made 10% on your investment. A question that I'm always asking is how does this change the world? And specifically, how does this make people more free? Well, the, the, the goal is to make you sort of resistant to attack. Being, being able to take this off the, the grid. Right. You're, you're no longer no. subject to the payment system. You're no longer subject to the, uh, to the infrastructure around the hosting. You don't, you don't need the ISPs anymore. I mean, you just, you can kind of exist a little bit outside of the control of the centralized authorities of the internet. And that's something that needs to be kept front and center. It's the only reason to do it because it's a pain in the ass. So, you know, why, like, you're not going to go set up a whole parallel infrastructure just to sort of like say, you know, cool, look at me. But so the other kind of interesting opportunity that it's kind of a big, it's a big reach, the way the EOS community, if you want to call it that, that's how they, they talk about themselves as a community. They're kind of a rainbows and unicorns group right now. They, they, <laughs> they it's like, you know, because it's on a blockchain, it is therefore amazing approach to everything, which it doesn't, you know, it's, it, they have it backwards, right? You, you need to have the ideas first and then the blockchain makes them harder to attack. Uh, so I, I think one of the opportunities for us in all this is if we can create an EOS node and be a block producer. First of all, we, it's a way for us to make money. And I think we can show some leadership in the, I mean, by the way, just being a block producer is just like running a node that somebody, uh, you know, points at, right? That's part of the setup. Right. For just, EO Studio. You have, you have to become a node anyway. You become a node anyway. You, you will have already done the work. So the point for us would be to sort of go, okay, we're going to be, you know, uh, the lead node, the lead. Well, we're going to just, we're not going to be this kind of retarded rainbows and unicorns, like cheerleading squad that squabbles about dumb stuff with each other all day. We're going to actually have a mission at a point and our, you know, and our goal is to make information fun and free. And that's the whole reason and, and to create a, a currency that, isn't necessarily subject to uh, sort of controls of the uh, of the oligarchs. We and have, I mean, there's a guy Brock Pierce who's just done this kind of interesting transaction. I don't know if you've ever heard of this guy, but uh, so EOS is interesting because it's only one of three crypto currencies that, by law, are not securities in the United States. Um, whereas everything else is just like, you know, pizza coin, any EC20 token, any token anybody creates is a, so, um, is a security. And then once it becomes a security, it becomes regulated. Pizza coin is an actual currency. It's money. So it gets regulated 
by the SEC and by the Treasury, and you know it falls under all the rules. Um, whereas EOS isn't, and as long as you don't turn it into cash and realize your uh, you know, turn it into money, then it's not money. How would that work with dark coin? Because I did imagine oh, some oh, there would is. turn EOS into dark coin. That would be the big, that would be the huge stretch is to be a better block producer and to have EOS become dark coin. Sort of go, look, we're going to do a better job of running the platform than the current collection of block producers who are. Most of what they're doing right now is squabbling over this giant, you know, pot of, of, of EOS tokens that are floating around between the founders and the, uh, the foundation that uh, got created that was supposed to use. The, the whole idea was they were supposed to use this money to fund projects in the ecosystem. And nobody really figured out how to deliver that funding in a way that created any useful projects. All they're doing is just fighting about, like, like, you know, these big rainbows and unicorns ideas. You know, like you saw with that Eden project, right? Is there, you know, it's just, it's like masturbatory decision making, right? It's like, well, what are we deciding? We don't know, but the process is really exotic. <laughs> um, so I, I just think there's an opportunity to 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 be better governors of what is, I think, an amazing technology. We have a very clear mission, st mission statement when we did our first paper, which was to break the fourth wall. Correct. For Mr. Beekeeper. <laughs> Mr. Beekeeper. For Mr. Beekeeper. And that's always been what guides us and what we do. We don't yeah. care about everything else is just a means to an end. So you brought up FJB coin, right? It was an example. And I mentioned that that is a, um, a hello world kind of project that we could start on right away. The FJB was done on Ethereum. Yeah. It's a, it's what's called an EC 20 token, which is, it's a three line. It's like three or four lines of code on the Ethereum blockchain. The token name equals FJB, max amount equals 10,000, uh, you know, and a couple more lines I can't remember, but, but literally it's a cut and paste four second programming job. What's the idea with the, with the dark with, coin, I guess. So I think, um, what would people use it for? Cause for me, the metric, like you said, would be very interesting. What? that we can attract people who are not into this. Initially they would, it would be a sign of support for Perseus and the Archon to keep us building dark world, dark world. Okay. Um, so we would start to accumulate dark coin that then we could either float onto an exchange and turn into real money that we could use then to kind of keep building keep funding uh, or just pay people in dark coin to then let them deal with turning it into real money. We don't even have to, you know, we don't have to get involved in the, in the transaction of turning dark coin into cash into us dollars. Right. We just kind of hire, we, you know, you could hire a, a designer developer guy and say, guess what? You're getting paid. We're paying you in with 10,000 dark coin. The guy's like, you know, explain why that's, appealing to me and you go, oh, because you could turn them into $20,000. Guy's like, okay, that, that sounds appealing, but then it's his problem to file the tax return and treat that as income, right? We don't have to get involved. The, the, the initial landing page for dark coin is to attract equity from people. To... Proof concept, right? It's because equity is the wrong word because equity suggests security. Mm -hmm. I think it's more to attract a pledge of future support. And for everyone who's just watching this, I'm just the beekeeper watched the, the last video. I'm using beekeeper broadly to refer to people who are, what's, what's the best, the best definition for a beekeeper mm -hmm. as a user, as a type of user who is 
free, you know, the free man kind of, right? The, 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 the guy who does, you know, the medieval freeman, the guy who doesn't necessarily want to be a serf on somebody's estate. Yeah. I mean, if, you know, if you go and park yourself in the middle of some giant corporation and be a kind of a, a gnome in some cubicle, you're just a modern version of a medieval serf at that point. Whereas if you, you know, you go and, and then your life is pretty good, right? It's not, it's not a bad life. You make, make money. You, you know, you're, what do you call those people? The corner people? The corner people. Yes. I'm fast headed there. You become one of the corner people. I don't get off the grid myself. Uh, yeah. We're, the, all, we're all destined for the corner at some point. <laughs> I'm, uh, well, I'm saying that, that there are a lot of people who are still new to this. And for me, the, there are different metrics I go by to besides, okay, we got people to click on this to, to transact and buy this is also usability, as you know, is a big deal for me. It'd be interesting. And that's one metric that I feel is, is missing from the development of blockchain is to, is the, uh, is the usability metric, like people who are not technologically in, in, inclined, we're making this for those people who want to be free. And, you know, when they come to this landing page, the things should just be apparent, like what the real value is. Never mind the whole back end thing. Like, oh yes, I, I, this, this can, this is a step towards, uh, this is a step off the, the satanic plantation. I mean, it's still, it's going to be kind of messy though. I mean, you're going to have to download a wallet and create an account on our node. And there's, there's going to be, it's not going to be, um, what's the word, you know, like super seamless. Yeah. Seamless. It will not be, it will be seamful. <laughs> It'll be seamful. <laughs> It'll be full of seam. So I want to see if we got something we can improve to. Yeah. I have a feeling it doesn't have to be like that. I just when I'm looking at it, I feel like there is, we can make it one less click. It may not be the case in the back end that you still have to keep these steps, but in the front end, I just feel like there's a way, there's something we can do to make it more seamless to not seem well, full. Just putting the instructions on one page would be helpful, right? I mean, it's like- Oh, there you go. Download yeah. the wallet, download the anchor wallet. So you just put the link to the anchor wallet on the page. And then once you've done that, then you go to create the EOS key pair and then you need to go to create your account and then you need the key pair and then your invite code. And then that gets you to create your account. And then the fourth step is pledge your IOU and invite the next guy. And when the next guy joins up, that turns your IOU into money. So I want to look into if that could be all that for you. If that four step could be done on a single session a page, I even so. though I know it's okay. Because when I'm I'm not seeing that with with the with other experiences, and I know why they do it like that. Because when I work with back end developers, I know how they think they're like the devil may care. You know, I'm <laughs> going to jump out of this website that way. They 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 think like that because developers love to do another video on how how they are wired in their head. They they are wired for the system they're not wired for people so for them it's normal to it's okay for you to click out five websites do this if you look at government websites they're built like that too yeah well they're they're like you know they're, they're the contractor guys who have a toolbox with fifty thousand things in it so for exactly. them to add two more things to the toolbox yeah there they're like wow well, enjoy know. it actually they're into it it's it's a it's a, it's a, it's a type of fetish almost cool. I have this special screwdriver that's only yes, which you must use, which you have to use in this use. circumstance. And you know, Alice in the Wonderland. She has to go through all these weird little passages just to and deal with all. That's a very good uh, metaphor. Yep. And it's and they like you know they'll talk about their special little screwdriver for the special little screw, and that'll form an entire like afternoon of excitement for them. The Cheshire Cat. Yes. You know, the Mad Hatter, thank you. This is what, when you work in the back end with people, they're, they're, it, these, they're just those characters. Makes no sense. Doesn't have to be that way. No, but th they I like it that way. Hatter. What? They like it that way. They like it that way. They think it's colorful and, and fun. And, and... Well, and, and they're, 
you know, often the way you achieve status and credibility in the developer in the developer community is to be a toolmaker. So if you make a tool that other people use, you're cool. I mean, it's like these people are endlessly making widgets and little apps that solve little problems and yeah. just, you know, and, and it's a lot of ways they get hired, right? I mean, if, you know, if you're the guy that made, you know, AP connect, which has, you know, 4.3 million users because it's a cool little thing that connects these two things that need to be connected. And you were the founder of AP connect, like you pretty much can get hired anywhere because you're the guy. So I'll, I'll get, I'll look into that. It's, it, it, it's, it'll be great if we're, we're the first, one of the first few people who can streamline the authentication experience. The, the huge, the thing that's going to let us do that is the big stumbling block up until now has been the conversion of US dollars into whatever particular uh, crypto 